I think it's important before we get into the contents of this report that we're all going to break down in the course of this hour. It's very important to understand something. This is sadly a swamp document. Now, the swamp always protects the swamp, unfortunately. And in reality, before we even get started, let me just remind you of something I said last night. The facts in this case are not in dispute. The evidence is overwhelming and controvertible. Hillary violated the Espionage Act. That's a fact. She mishandled, she destroyed, classified, top secret, special access programming information. It's a fact. She deleted 33,000 subpoenaed emails. She acid washed her hard drive with bleach bit so they couldn't get them. Facts. And she had aides destroy her mobile devices with hammers. Also a fact. Here's another fact. Christian Saucier spent a year in prison for what? Six pictures on a cell phone at a submarine that he was proud that he worked on. He never shared it with anybody. So in terms of severity, it doesn't compare to what we know Hillary Clinton did. Now, we also know that Comey and Trump hater Peter Strzok started writing her exoneration in early May of 2016. That's a fact. They didn't interview her until July 2nd, 2016, and then July 5th, they exonerated her. And we know they pulled the legal definition of gross negligence. They pulled it right out of the document. They pulled out in one of their earlier uh, writings in this that, in fact, foreign intelligence services had hacked into that bathroom closet. All a fact. Every single American tonight, you should be shocked, you should be disappointed, you should be concerned about what we're learning. We're talking about abuse of power and corruption at the highest levels of the FBI and how the FBI was politicized. It's all true, and we have a lot of new evidence we'll share with you tonight. And I want to be very clear at the start. I'm not talking about rank-and-file FBI guys. I'm not talking about them. I predict... By the time this story ends, they will end up being the heroes when they're finally subpoenaed and allowed to testify and tell their stories about what they saw their bosses were doing. And tonight we'll highlight the stark difference between two investigations. You get the white glove special treatment for Hillary Clinton and then the heavy handed tactics all in against Donald Trump. It should shock you if you believe in equal justice under the law, equal application of our laws and our Constitution. Now, with Hillary Clinton, everyone was given immunity. With Donald Trump, it's search warrants, subpoenas, breaking down doors at, you know, 6 a.m., guns ablaze. The hatred of Donald Trump from the left and the media in this country knows no bounds. There really was a scheme to protect Hillary Rodham Clinton from being indicted and smear and slander then candidate, then president-elect Donald Trump, and now president at all costs. Now, the contempt for you, the American people, the things that some of these people said about us, you, the American people, is repugnant. It's appalling. It shouldn't happen in this country. Now to the report. As I just said, its findings confirm pretty much everything we have been telling you here on Hannity for months and that many in the media have ignored. We have Trey Gowdy summed it up very well. He said, quote, I am alarmed, I am angered, and I'm deeply disappointed by the inspector general's findings of numerous failures by the DOJ and FBI in investigating potential Espionage Act violations by the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Without further discussion, here is what Gowdy is talking about. First and foremost, we start with disgrace. Former FBI Director James Comey. Now, President Trump fired Comey for mishandling the Clinton server investigation, among other reasons. He deserved to be fired. Tonight, the president is vindicated. The inspector general finds in this report James Comey's actions were both extraordinary and insubordinate. His investigation into Hillary Clinton deviated from well-established department policies. Now, this includes Comey and other FBI agents allowing Clinton aide and witnesses to the investigation, Cheryl Mills, to actually sit in during Hillary Clinton's FBI interview, an interview that took place after Comey had already drafted a letter exonerating Hillary of all charges. And there's more. The report also finds that while investigating Hillary Clinton for conducting official government business with a private email account, whoa, James Comey was also using a private email account to conduct official government business. And by the way, Comey responded on Twitter, writing, quote, I respect the DOJ, IG, office, which is why I urge them to do this review. The conclusions are reasonable, even though I disagree with some. People of good faith can see an unprecedented situation differently. I pray no director faces it again, thanks to IG's people for hard work. Let's break this down. 
James Comey, the FBI director, went rogue. There's no other conclusion. He broke longstanding department policy, literally writing the exoneration of Hillary Clinton before ever interviewing her or 17 other key witnesses, closed up the investigation, and immediately the same people that hated Trump that we now know, and we'll, we'll prove it in more detail, the same people literally begin the investigation of Donald Trump. Remember, they exonerated her way back in May, interviewed her July 2nd, July 5th, oh, she's exonerated. And we know people that committed the very same misdeeds as Clinton, well, they were investigated and many put in jail. That's why Comey was fired and should be investigated further, and that's not all. Now we have even more evidence to show how FBI agents mishandled the Clinton investigation. Let's go back to the IG report. Agents involved in the Clinton Foundation investigation, get this, they were instructed to take no overt investigative steps prior to the election. And the report also confirmed that while the FBI was tiptoeing around their favored candidate, Hillary Clinton, who they fully thought would win the election, Clinton's private server was being accessed by foreign actors. Oh, that's something else that they took out. And remember the FBI Trump hating lovebirds, Struck and Page? Well, they're back, and they're back in a big way tonight. And by the way, they're heavily featured in Horowitz's report. When you see this, keep in mind Horowitz, unbelievably, this is outrageous, did not find that bias impacted the FBI investigation. I'm sorry, Mr. Horowitz, you're wrong. Look at this newly uncovered text message. The date, August 8, 2016, Page exclaims, Trump's never going to become president, right? Right? And Strzok responds, quote, no, no, he's not. We'll stop it. We'll stop it. In case you're wondering what Strzok is talking about, he's making it crystal clear in this tweet from a month earlier, in July of 2016. Damn, this feels momentous because this matters. The other one did too, meaning the, the investigation into Clinton, but that was to ensure we didn't bleep something up. This matters because this matters. So super glad to be on this voyage with you. And of course, Strzok is talking about the impending Russia investigation into the Trump campaign and comparing it to the Clinton investigation, which he tried so hard not to screw up because it was his effort to clear Hillary Clinton of all charges so she could remain a candidate, the favored candidate. Don't forget about the insurance policy that was referenced in previous page struck texts if, in fact, Trump won the election. Now, it's important to also remember that all of this took place around extreme levels of anti-Trump bias at the highest levels of FBI. Some of it should shock the conscience. Page calling Trump an enormous D-bag. And that to the list, add that to the list of insults, both Page and Strzok were lobbying against Donald Trump, calling him an idiot, a menace, a lonesome human being, and so much more. And Strzok is the guy leading all of this investigation. Then the report concluded about these texts, quote, not only indicative of a biased state of mind, but even more seriously implies a willingness to take official action to impact the presidential candidate's electoral prospects. Yeah, that's political. Lisa Page, by the way, called Trump, an, as we said before, we won't go back to that. And now the IG found evidence of so much more bias among FBI officials. For example, look at this message from one unnamed agent, quote, Trump supporters, by the way, that's you, are all poor to middle class, uneducated, lazy POSs, we know what that is, that think he will magically grant them jobs for doing nothing. On October 28, 2016, shortly after Comey's letter to Congress that announced the reopening of the Clinton investigation, one unnamed FBI attorney sent an instant message to a fellow FBI employee. Look at this. I'm clinging to small pockets of happiness in the dark times of the republic's destruction. And following the election, the same FBI attorney sent an instant message that said, quote, I'm numb, with a fellow employee responding, I can't stop crying. Now, prior to the election in September of 2016, one FBI agent involved in an instant message conversation where they attacked President Trump's supporters. Their words, not mine, I don't use it, retarded. And by the way, that's only the tip of the iceberg. IG has referred five FBI employees for investigation after uncovering their extreme political bias. And get this, Horowitz's overall conclusion said, no prevailing bias at the FBI and its actions in the Clinton and Trump investigations. Really, Mr. Horowitz? 
You don't see that as political bias? What do you call everything you just reported? It's all political. And look at this. The IG report also found that FBI employees received, oh, free tickets to sporting events from who? The Destroy Trump media, so-called journalists. They went on golf outings with media reps. They were treated to drinks and food by reporters. Now, because of everything we just showed you, that report concluded that Comey, Page, Strzok, and others severely damaged the reputation of the FBI. And here's what current FBI Director Christopher Wray said about all of these damning findings. Take a look. I take this report very seriously, and we accept its findings and recommendations. It's also important, though, to note what the Inspector General did not find. This report did not find any evidence of political bias or improper considerations actually impacting the investigation under review. The report does identify errors of judgment, violations of or even disregard for policy, and decisions that, at the very least, with the benefit of hindsight, were not the best choices. We've already started taking the necessary steps to address those issues. Director Ray, read the document. There's politics all over that document. And for you to say otherwise is not fair to the American people, nor is it fair to all the good, honest, hardworking FBI uh, individuals rank and file that protect us every day that you did rightly talk about today. A good start? All right, Director Ray. Well, that would be firing Peter Strzok. Why does he still have a job, despite everything you just saw? Peter Strzok remains on the payroll of the Federal Bureau of Investigation? Are you kidding me? And meanwhile, the Obama administration was also featured in the report. Footnote, page 89, it reads, quote, President Barack Obama, he was one of 13 individuals with whom Clinton had direct contact using her ClintonMail.com account. That information breaks with Obama's initial claims that he learned of Clinton's private email from the media reports. What were they protecting? Remember, they changed that to say, oh, a high-ranking official. And the attorney general at the time, Loretta Lynch, she was also taken to task in the report for her now infamous tarmac meeting with Bill Clinton just before they came to a decision in June of 2016. The report states, quote, Lynch's failure to recognize the appearance problem created by former President Clinton's visit and to take action to cut the visit short was an error in judgment. Yeah, okay, 45 minutes talking about grandchildren. I'll buy that. But first, here's how Chairman Gowdy and Goodlatte, by the way, responded to this entire report earlier today. Take a look. What a dark day it is for the FBI and the DOJ, two institutions our country desperately needs. We desperately have to be able to have confidence in them. And this level of bias and animus, uh, not only did he want to stop the Trump campaign, he wanted to stop the Trump presidency. This You're is an FBI. Peter Strzok. Peter Strzok, the, the FBI agent who was on Hillary Clinton's investigation and arguably the lead Russia investigator, not only wanted to stop his campaign, but once he won, got on the Mueller probe because he wanted to impeach him. This report shows that there was special treatment given to Hillary Clinton in the investigation of her case. There are There is not uh, standard procedures followed in investigating her, uh, and there was special treatment given. There's no doubt that this was not proper process, and the report shows time and time again how Director Comey and others made mis uh, mistakes, errors in judgment, or deliberate. People can draw their own conclusions, but it was improperly handled. Let me sum it up. Hillary Clinton committed felonies, and she should have been charged. And these people ran interference for her. We have ample evidence of bias, corruption, politics, misconduct at the highest levels of the FBI, the DOJ, and now the Obama administration. Yet, won't call this for what it is, Mr. Horowitz. You can't conclude the obvious bias impacted some at the upper echelon of the FBI and their work and their so-called investigation. Why? Because that would taint the phony Russia collusion investigation. We cannot have a two-tiered justice system in the United States of America. One for the Clintons, one for Trump, and one for everybody else. Three-tiered, perhaps. And while the findings of this report are important, we must now demand more. This is a first step. There's got to be accountability. 
We've got to have a better system of government or the very foundation of our rule of law in the United States of America is in jeopardy.